Welcome to Electron Line, and now we're going to take a closer look at the electric field amplitude caused by, diffra by diffraction. So we have a single slit, we have a beam of light coming through the slit, and of course if we look directly across the slit, we have a maximum right there called the central maximum. All the portions of the beam are in phase, so there's no phase distortion of any sort. But if you look at any point above or below the central maximum, we then realize that the different portions of the beam have to travel a different distance so that each successive portion in the beam will have a greater and greater exit distance that must be traveled. And because of that, all the individual portions of the beam are going to be out of phase by some amount. And if we then add those phases together, those individual pieces of beam together, you can see that the total electric field amplitude would be the line directly across from there to there if we add them all up because we do what we call a vector addition. Notice that the phase difference between the first portion of the beam right up there and the last portion of the beam right down there is equal to phi. And of course phi is equal to the fraction uh, of the wavelength. So we could say that phi is equal to the extra distance traveled divided by the wavelength. So this is a fraction of a wavelength times 360 degrees or times 2 pi. That's what we mean by the phase angle between the beginning and the end of the beam or the top and the bottom of the beam, so to speak. All right, now we have to mathematically find some relationship between the angle phi and between the phase difference. And from that, we can find the electric field amplitude of a beam anywhere along the uh, screen on the other side because ultimately it's using the electric field amplitude that we need to find the intensity of the beam anywhere along the screen. All right, so using simple geometry we realize that this is an arc length and that the arc length um, E sub naught, so let's call that E sub naught right here, is equal to the radius R times the angle phi. So the angle, this angle phi is the same as this angle phi right there. So then we can say that the radius of this arc can be written as E sub naught divided by phi. The next thing we want to do is we want to take the sine of phi. So the sine of phi divided by 2. Let's do it, the sine, because we have this divided in 2, because that way we have a right angle triangle right there. So let's take the sine of phi divided by 2 and see what we get. Now, by definition, of course, the sine of an angle is equal to the ratio of the opposite side divided by the adjacent side. Oh, not, that's the tangent. Opposite side over the hypotenuse, that's better. All right? So by definition, the sine of any angle is equal to the ratio of the opposite side of, of, of divided by the hypotenuse. And in this case, we have phi divided by 2, that's the angle right here. So the opposite side of that angle would be E total divided by 2, and the hypotenuse, that would be R, would be the ratio of E sub naught divided by phi. All right, so now we want to write E total, because what we're trying to find is we're trying to find this sum right here, the vector sum of all the small little contributions of the little portions of the beam. So we want to solve that equation for E sub 2. So we have E sub 2, or E sub t, divided by 2 is equal to E sub naught divided by phi times, so we bring that up here, times the sine of phi divided by 2. All right, if I now multiply both sides by 2, see what we get. So multiply the ref side by 2, I get E total is equal to E sub naught divided by phi divided by 2. Now that's interesting. If I multiply the numerator, that same as dividing the denominator by the same number. So if I multiply 2, if I, if I write 2 e sub naught, I can do the same thing as writing e sub naught divided by phi divided by 2. That's the same thing. I multiply both sides by 2 times the sine of phi divided by 2. Now I did that for a special reason. Because now what I'm going to write is I'm going to write e sub total so it's simply the sum of all the phases of the beam is equal to E sub naught. Now E sub naught would be the full would be the full strength of the field amplitude if we shine the light directly across. So it's relative to that. And that would be the arc length of these phases that we have them together. All right. So E sub naught times the quantity sine of phi over two divided by phi over two. All right.
Now, that is one of our major equations for the diffraction of a single beam. The reason is that this gives us the total electric field strength as a function of the phasor. And of course, let's say the phase angle here, if the phase angle becomes 360 degrees, the sine of 360 degrees divided by 2, that's the sine of 180 degrees, and sine of 180 degrees is 0. That means if the phase angle is 360 degrees, if the difference between the top and the bottom of the beam is a full lambda, then you can see you get a minimum. That means that halfway through the beam, the phase difference is a half a lambda, and we saw that in previous videos, that if we get down to halfway through the beam, and the phase difference is a half a lambda, we get a minimum. Here we can see that if the phase angle for the whole beam is 360 degrees, in such a way that 360 divided by 2 is 180, the sine of 180 is 0, and again, mathematically, you see that gives us zero electric field strength, which will give you zero intensity as well. So here we can see that with that fraction, E total, can be written in terms of E sub naught, which is a total electric field oscillation strength when we have a single beam of light going directly through a slit, directly across to the, without, uh, without having a phase difference, E sub naught, times the ratio of the sine of phi divided by 2 divided by phi divided by 2. This here is worthy of having this boxed up because that's a very important equation. So that's how we calculate the electric field amplitude of a diffraction. In this case, if the angle is anything other than zero, you can see that we then have an E total that will be less to some extent than E sub naught, depending upon the size of that phase angle. And I'll show you some examples of how to utilize this in order to understand this equation a little bit better. But that's one of the key equations for diffraction.